In this video, I'll discuss file management for writing LaTeX documents using Vim, as well as version control with Git, where you can track the history of your file, creating multiple save points, which you can revert to if need be. So to begin with, we can note that there's a green bar up here, which tells me that this document has been saved. There's no little plus sign. Um, and if I open the Explorer, space E, we see the same thing. There's no little plus sign. And there's also no symbols over here on the left side um, telling me that the file has been modified. And so what this means is that the file as it exists on my hard drive is up to date with the last save point, which I've committed in Git. So let's make some change here. So say I delete these extraneous lines. And now I have a blue bar up here and there's a little plus sign. And similarly, if I open the Explorer, there's a little plus sign next to this file. So if I save this, uh, space W, then when I open up the Explorer, although there's no plus sign here, there now is a little M telling me that the file has been modified since the last time that I've committed it in, in the Git history. We do not find a similar thing for the PDF. So the PDF has also changed. However, I've told Git to ignore all of these auxiliary files because I don't need it to be tracking multiple versions of the PDF and all of these um, auxiliary files. So in order to commit that change, uh, we can open up, I have in which key here, G for Git. And this gives me a whole bunch of different commands, Git commands, which I can run. But the main one I'm gonna be using is S for stage. And what this brings up is this plugin lazy git, which allows me to run most of the git commands that I would ever use, um, all from this little dialog box here, which is, which is rather convenient. So we have just one file, which has changed, um, and it's indicated by an M for modified. So let's, um, let's stage that file. Um, it's worth noting that over on the right-hand side here, this tells me basically how the file has differed. So I've just deleted these lines. That's the only change that's been made. Um, it's also worth noting that I only have one branch so far in this project. Um, and there's been, zero, there's been zero commits since the last push to the online repository, which means the version of this file as it exists in GitHub is up to date with the last time that I've committed the file. However, I'm about to make a new commit, and so we will see this change. So let's press C for commit. And so I can say uh, deleted a few lines. OK. So now what I have is one commit since my last push to the online repository, which means that the file as it exists on my computer is a little bit different and a little bit more recent than the file that exists on GitHub. So in order to push this so that, you know, though I wouldn't push every single time, usually I'd let these stack up a little bit, but in order just to demonstrate, um, I would do shift P and so type in my username and password because this is a private repository. So, and that's it. Uh, now we're back to zero, zero. And so this is an easy way that you can back up your file, not every single time that you save it or not every time that you create a commit, but you know after you've added some significant amount of content. And it also allows you to work on your file from any computer. You can go onto GitHub, open up your file, and add content if you like, which is sometimes convenient, um, as well as work on the same file from multiple computers. So if I have another laptop, say at home, and one at work, then when I go home, I can pull down all the changes which I made at work and to my laptop on home at home, then work on the file a little bit, make some commits, and then push those back up to the repository. And so when I go back to work, then I can carry on uh, work, pulling the file, the most recent version of the file down from GitHub and working on it on my local machine at work. This is also useful for collaborating on files with multiple people and you can also see who has made which changes. Um, in the case where it's me in both cases, you know, pushing uh, different versions of the file to the same repository, that's not so interesting. However, if you're collaborating with someone else, it's useful sometimes to see who has made which changes to the document. 
Okay, so that's a little bit about Git. I should mention that Git is an extremely sophisticated program and includes many more commands than I've mentioned here. For instance, I've not at all discussed branching, where if you want to make some kind of change to your paper, which you're not sure if it's all going to work out, for instance, say you're considering rewriting a section and you don't know if you're going to like the changes that you're about to make, you can create a new branch where if you end up in a place that you like, you can merge that back into the master branch and carry on working on your paper. But if you don't like the changes that you've made, you don't have to delete that branch. You can just leave it inside your Git history. You can revert back to the master branch and carry on from where you were before you started making those changes. Um, it's also worth seeing a few other places in which Git is integrated into Vim. So say I make a change, say I insert just a new line. So this will be registered by this little plus sign here. Whereas if I change a word here or delete a word um, in this, so say, you know, I, right, let's, let's uh, yeah, delete that whole word there. So this will be registered with this little squiggle. Um, so this is the Git gutter and it shows me all kinds of different changes um, as, as I accumulate them. It gives me some indication when I'm due for a commit. Okay, let's talk a little more about file management. So we've already seen the Explorer, which I can open up with space E. Um, this is a fairly simple project, however. It really just has two files in it I care about, this .tech file and this scrap file. Um, all the other ones, including the PDF, can be generated from those. And you know many of these I've told Git to not worry about. So I've ignored all of those files. And so I will never see a little symbol next to them um, telling me whether they've modified or not. Um, but let's get out of that. So another way to manage files um, is say I want to open some new file. I can do control P, which is a fuzzy finder. And so what this is doing is it's looking for only the files which Git is tracking in my project folder, which in this case is just these two files. So it's not terribly useful. Um, I can open those files just fine using the Explorer and opening them that way. Um, however, in a more complicated project, maybe worth switching back to this project here. Um, so this uh, configuration project. So in a .vim sources all of these different configuration files and they're in you know, their respective folders and so on. And so it's often useful to be able to search through all of the different files I have in this project file instead of having to you know, find them, sort through the, the folder tree. So to see that, let's open um, the Explorer. So here's nvim uh, and this is where init.vim is down here. And you know, if I wanted to open up some other file, I, you know, I could probably find it inside of here, but I would have to hunt around a little bit. Um, by contrast, if I do Control P, so this brings up all the different files Git is tracking, and you know, now I can search fairly easily. Say I want to look for mappings, so mappings, and I can even spell these wrong. I can skip both P's and just, um, and so this is a fuzzy finder. It allows me to make mistakes, spell things wrong. Um, which is very useful for quickly, quickly opening files. It's also useful, you don't quite know the name of the file, you can make a guess and it will typically find it. So let's open up mappings. So these are all the different mappings which I've included, um, which diverge from what comes stock with Vim and from what I've included in which key, um, where which key is all based off of the spacebar. But there's many other mappings which I've included um, which are somewhat different than that. I mean, a good example of this is, um, so shift K and shift J and, and so on for, so let's to see how that works. Let's switch back to this document. So if I'm in, if I'm on this line here and I press J, it's going to go down to the next numbered line and similarly J. And so, you know, say I want to go down just to the next word to interpretation. So if I hold down shift and then press J, then it just goes down to that word um, and so on. And so that's often useful for, for sort of navigating, making sort of more like little local navigations. And so I've achieved that with this mapping here, shift K, shift J, and this works both in normal mode and in visual mode. 
So that's all that I wanted to discuss as far as file management and version control using Git. In the next video, I'll discuss a plugin for undo tree, as well as a convenient autocomplete plugin for writing quotations, as well as parentheses, um, as well as a nice surround plugin for inserting quotations and deleting quotations uh, very easily instead of having to navigate to both ends and deleting the quotation and, or inserting the, the quotation and so on.